Okay, so in this problem, it says the volume V of, gas var of a gas varies inversely as the pressure P on it. If the volume is 240 centimeters cubed under the pressure of 30 kilograms per centimeter squared, what pressure has to be applied to have a volume of 160 meters cubed? So there's a lot of jargon in here, but we can break this down. This is part of the reason we really like inverse variation. It's going to kind of simplify stuff for us. So... Um, Let's take a look at this. What kind of variation are we dealing with? We, set, we can see up here we have inverse variation. What's the equation for inverse variation? Well, it's going to be y equals k over x. That's just the generalized form for inverse variation. You can see that in our problem, instead of y and x, we're going to have v and p. k is going to always stick around. So our equation is going to be, um, we're going to have v varies inversely, so k over is what inversely means, and then it's inversely to the pressure. So we have a p on the, in the bottom. So, sorry, let me fix this real quick. And so first thing that we do is we set up our equation, and now take a look. They tell us a value of v and p. It says the volume is 240 centimeters cubed under a pressure of 30 kilograms per centimeter squared. So it tells us that we know that v equals 240 when P equals 30. So let's plug those values in and solve for K. So it's going to be 240 is equal to, K stays on top, and then on the bottom for P, we know P is 30. Now how do we get K by itself? Well, we're going to multiply both sides by 30. My pen does not want to write today, but we're multiplying both sides by 30. So 240 times 30 is, we should have 7,200 over here equals the 30s cancel out and over here, and we're just left with K. After you find K, now what we're going to do is, let's zoom out a little bit, we're going to plug K back in. So let's take this equation over here, let's bring this over here, and where we see K, we now know that k is equal to 7,200. So our new equation is going to be v is equal to 7,200 over p. Now that we've got that constant of variation, we can find the pressure because it says um, what pressure has to be applied to have a volume of 160. So they want to know when v is 160, what's the value of p? So we want to know if v is 160, what is P equal? Well, let's plug that V in there and see what we get. We get 160 equals 7,200 over P. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply to solve this. So to cross multiply, we're going to multiply what's in the, denom the numerator here. So 160 times P is going to give us 160 P. And then when I do 1 times 7,200, we're going to get 7,200. And now we just divide both sides by 160 to figure out what the pressure would have to be. And so 7,200 divided by 160 gives us, we get P is equal to 45. So if we had a volume of 160, the pressure would have to be 45. 